Script writing app Final Draft 12 is out. And it's about two years, I think, or more since Final Draft 11. So it's actually quite exciting to have a big upgrade. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing that has been the thing since about maybe Final Draft 6 or 7 at the latest. The heart of Final Draft is exactly the same. And it's the heart of it that you really need. Uh, there are some issues about you using Final Draft 8 when your studio is using Final Draft 12, but really for writing scripts and screenplays, Final Draft cannot change very much because it's always done what you need. So when there is a big upgrade, it's always invariably to do with uh, the sidelines, the extras, nice things to have. You can picture the developers frantically thinking of something new we can add to this. And then if you are a Final Draft user, you don't have to picture this. You've seen it yourself. We get to scratch our heads and try to figure out what are these new things? Are those new things worth it? And there's slightly more. Final Draft, the company, could be clearer about what is genuinely new, what's a real new feature and what's an improved or renamed one. There is now this page on the Final Draft site that compares versions, but you you know what these comparisons are like. They are, of course, tilted in favour of the new one. Obviously they are. It takes effort to see what's really new. Then I think you have to actually use it to know for sure whether it's worth your time and your money, which is pretty nice for the final draft company. Um, if this is your working writing app, I've no problem at all with it costing quite a bit of money compared to others, but I do have a problem with spending money and getting no apparent benefit. I spent the money so that you don't have to, but you may want to. Let me show you. Here's what's truly new and truly improved in Final Draft 12. Hello, I'm William Gallagher, and this is 58 Keys, which, as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me who use Macs and iPhones and iPads. Do subscribe below because we have so much to talk about. Please note by the way this time what I want to talk about is very specifically about upgrading uh, to Final Draft 12 from an older version of the script writing software. So from older Final Draft to the very latest. If you've never used Final Draft, well I mean you're a writer, you're going to get this, you'll see what it's really about. But what I want to do is very specifically address upgrading. Short version. If you have Final Draft 10 or older, then Final Draft is definitely a good upgrade. If you have version 11, it's less of a leap, but actually I'm glad that I did, that I leapt. There are features that, uh, there are old features, but I barely knew they were there in Final Draft 11 that I've now been using uh, because of their improvements and their increased visibility, I suppose, in 12. You know all of this is subjective. Uh, but there's so much to be subjective about when you're going to be spending hundreds of hours in front of an app writing. So let me tell you what I think is surely the most trivial improvement, and yet which is one I like immensely. Final Draft 12 looks and feels more like a Mac app than it used to. At times it used to be like we had a, a Windows app shoved onto the Mac, and there is still more that can be done, but it really feels much better, and that honestly makes me happy. Um, let me show you some more specific features there, something a bit more tangible than that. What used to be called the story map, and I never looked at, is now the outline editor, and I do look at it. It's this region at the top of the script. I think of it as a kind of a horizontal outline. Uh, that is, in that bar, the whole of your script laid out horizontally. Uh, you can set how long you want the script to be, so 120 pages for a film, 60 for TV if you want, and then arrange the outline in that space. For all that I've prepared 100 events a year in Omni Outliner, I'm not actually a big outlining fan for writing, except with scripts I can't just write and hope it works out. That's exactly what I do actually, but... Uh, because I've got deadlines and I have to complete script project by times, I have to plan a bit more. So this is useful. Maybe it's because of that deadline pressure. Maybe it's because Final Draft 12 has improved features. Or possibly it's just because the particular script project that I'm writing right now just somehow lends itself to this. But I have started a script now by building an outline. And in Final Draft, 
that meant using the beat board. Here, here's the beat board. I slapped down an idea, then another idea, then another idea. Fine, I dragged them around on the screen. I wish I did it as fast as this looks, but there you go. Clumped them all together, changed the color for emphasis, and uh, to see connections, if I like. Uh, you can drag things around to connect them. You can do a lot of this in Final Draft 11, but what is new is this business of linking these beats together. Drag one atop the other and they are connected. They stay connected wherever you drag each one. And again, really, this just seems to so well suit my current project. The linking is part of the worth of it. Uh, have a look at the same thing in Final Draft 11. Doesn't it suddenly seem bare without all the links? Anyway, in 12, having dumped every idea I've got and now also every scene that I know I must have, having dumped them all onto this beat board, I found I was naturally moving them around. I was adjusting them into, this will be in the start, the early bits, the middle, the end. Uh, you can do all of that in the new outline view too. Just move it around here. And just to try this out, I did create an act one, act two, a three section in this top level of the outline. And then I did drag these various beats into roughly their correct acts, move them around a bit, fiddle it a lot. I mean, again, compare this to Final Draft 11. I don't think Final Draft 11's version is all that usable, but I may be biased because I never used it. No, not true. Um, I was opening an old script when I was preparing this to talk to you. I wanted to find something to show you and I found it actually did have three little script notes in the outline. I'm pretty sure that was from when Final Draft 11 came out and I was just trying the new things. And yeah, who knows? Maybe the same thing will happen with Final Draft 12 and I never come back to these features after a little while. But right now, today, I found that beat board really useful for this project and the linking especially. And right now, today, I found that outline handy, especially as you can now tug at it to make things uh, bigger, easier to see than you could before. Having done all of this, there is then a button, send outline to script, that's new as well. It takes everything you've done here, every, every note, every beat you've arranged and chucks it into the script like an outline. I like that it makes you feel like you're making progress. I haven't written anything yet, and there's a, several pages of script. I don't like having that outline showing when I'm doing the proper writing. I don't like mixing outline and script. Uh, so do use this, the ability to show or hide the outline in the script as you need. I would really like there to be a keystroke for that, and there isn't, but you know, this is a Mac. So I've added a keystroke. Actually, I've added a button on a stream deck but that's another story altogether. That's another story. Uh, still, uh, when I want to see the outline, tap, done. When I want to concentrate on the script, tap, done. I don't like that you can only send the outline to the script once. Where are you? You can't uh, outline, write some script, and decide, mm, need to fiddle with the outline some more. You can, but then if you go hit send outline script, again, it sends the new one, into the old one in the script. It retains the old, you have two versions of lots of things. If I have to outline, I want the ability to move things around. And I swear to you that the scene navigator used to be a way to do this. A feature called scene navigator was a way you could call up a list of your scenes, which actually you can still do, and drag to rearrange them, which you can't anymore. Maybe that was something back in Final Draft 7, which I think is where I started using this. There is, though, actually another view. There's a separate scene view in which you can rearrange. I'd like a faster way to be able to move between those views. I'd like faster ways to use. I really like that the beat board is now a single click to get into, but it's not a single click to come back out of. Um, I, I like, too, that you can uh, you can split the screen and have the outline of the beat board on one side or at the top or the bottom and your regular script in the middle. I don't like that this sometimes goes wrong. Sometimes I've had to choose the views again before they change, before they, they're kind of stuck. Um, I would also like the ability to show the outline on one side and the script on the other. I just said you could, but I meant uh, the beats, right? I'd like the, the outline text on both sides. I w there is a, still the scene navigator, which would list them like that. And you can split the views and have greater or larger detail or so. But uh, now actually, sorry, I'm doing what Final Draft the company does. I'm blurring, aren't I, between new and tiny improved features. Let me tell you some more out and out new ones. Previously on Final Draft 11, you could collaborate in your script live in real time with another writer anywhere in the world. 
in Final Draft 12. You can now also do that when you're in that beat board. Uh, you can fight over the arrangement of beats. And uh, if there are two of you working, actually working on the script now, not the beat board anymore, not the outline anymore, but the script itself, then you can now track changes. It's exactly like track changes in Microsoft Word. And so you probably already can tell instantly whether or not that's going to be useful to you or not. Also, there's now a focus mode. Click this and Final Draft 12 expands to fill your whole screen, shutting out everything else and also minimizing its own uh, toolbars and menus and ribbons and things so that it's your script that fills your view, that fills your attention. I might use that, but it looks a bit weird on a very wide monitor. Um, I prefer, for what it's worth, I prefer to centre Final Draft and then hide everything else. If you know this keystroke, hold down Option, Command, H, you're in an app, hides all other apps. There's also Dart Mode. There you go. Last completely new thing, Final Draft 12 can open PDF scripts. So you've got a screenplay in PDF, Final Draft 12 can open it and make it instantly into an editable Final Draft document. It's not perfect, it depends on how the original screenplay was saved, but it works. Except, why? I read at least one script every day, and, and it's true that the immense majority of them are in PDF, but I just read the PDF. I don't need to bring it into Final Draft to carry on reading, and it's not like I'm going to rewrite someone else's script. Okay, actually saying that, Maybe I'll rewrite one of mine. Maybe if you've got old scripts in PDF format, this is a way to save you doing much retyping. You can bring it into Final Draft automatically, I suppose. That business of bringing PDF scripts into Final Draft, I think it's part of, uh, of a sense I've got with this version that the makers want this app to be your sole complete writing tool. I think it's trying to give you one destination to turn to, whether you're starting out with the vague ideas as I have with this particular project, whether or not you're then trying to hone those ideas into a proper outline, whether you're then going on to write the proper script. I like that. I like that Final 12 is trying to be a complete one-stop solution. Even though I'm not going to stop once, you see what I mean? I'm going to continue using others. I think in particular that uh, Omni Outliner is a better outlining tool. It's richer, more visible, more powerful. Um, but I like that I can turn to Final Draft for this particular project and have everything about it in one place. I do like that. But actually, overall, odd thing to say, but I'm happier in Final Draft 12 than I was in Final Draft 11, and that's big. There are still two things that irritate me immensely, though. One is a bit niche. If you've ever had to work with both US and UK producers on the same or different projects, well, uh, paper sizes are different, aren't they? You have to switch between a US letter format and A4 that you use in Europe, and yeah, good luck with that. To do it, you just open the script, just go to the docket menu, just choose page layout, and away off you go, but you switch it to A4 now, it might stay on that, it might not. The script, the next script you completely different, could be A4, could be US letter. I presume that it was tied to each document, like a, a template, because there isn't an overall setting. But, you know, I will save in US letter, I'll change it, save it in A4, next one I open, the next new one completely separate. I find, funny enough, when I'm, because the pages are shorter in the US, I, there have been times when I thought I was flying through a script, suddenly realise this is wrong switched it to A4 and the page count shrunk. I felt a bit robbed there. Uh, I wish there were an overall preference that you could change that would say all documents from now on until you change it are in A4 or US letter. Maybe that would do it. Or maybe just each script sticking to what you set. I would take that too. Uh, next, this is never going to change and I so wish it would, is the title page. A final draft separates the title page from the script. It's so that you have the option of printing your script with or without the title page. And when are you ever going to want to print it without the title page? I mean, once you know that you have to go to a completely separate section of final draft to write the title page, OK, fine, you know it, you'll keep doing it. But you cannot believe how many writers don't know this. I've read the scripts to 100 and 200 million dollar movies 
and the front page says the script is called Script Title, written by Name of First Writer. So it's not flawless, it's not without irritations. And actually, if you're used to writing in other script layout apps like Fade In or Highland 2, there's going to be some getting used to Final Draft. But this software has always been very good for writing scripts. I mean, we used to do this in Word, so anything's better. But Final Draft as a whole is very good. Final Draft 12 is as well. I bought the upgrade and now actually I am glad that I did. Uh, the upgrade cost in version 11 that I had was $80 or about £55. Most certainly worth that. I actually think Final Draft is worth the full retail price too, despite the odd irritations. Uh, full retail price is theoretic theoretically about $250, but there's always a sale on. Right now, mid-2012, Final Draft itself, the company is selling version 12 for $200. Interestingly, though, you have to hunt for that full cost. Final Draft is clearly certain that most people who buy it will be upgraders. I don't know whether that says a lot about how many people have used Final Draft in the past and love it so much that they'll continue, or how many people are never going to switch to Final Draft from alternatives. But um, I said I was glad I upgraded from 11. It's an easier decision if you're on version 10 or older. I mean, you don't have to upgrade every time. And as I, I mean, I certainly I don't. Uh, as I say, the core features of Final Draft, the ones that really matter about writing the script, they haven't changed since the 1990s. But if you are going to upgrade from time to time, version 12 is a good one to upgrade to. It might just be that my current work happens. It's an unusual project. It happens to suit this. But I'm enjoying writing in Final Draft 12. What more do we ever want? We could spend longer on Final Draft 12, really work through a script together, have an extended 58 keys. I'm thinking of doing 58 keys specials that really get into the weeds of a, a particular writing app. I mean, you know, clearly Final Draft would be one of those. Uh, would you let me know in the comments if that would be any use to you? Um, uh, Final Draft pages, don't ask me about Word, okay? Omni Outliner, ask me about Omni Outliner. Might be able to fill an hour with that one. Yeah, uh, key apps that have so much in them that they warrant longer, more in-depth examination. But for now, that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourself, eh? And I'll see you soon.